remember going straight to my bathroom and crying because I was like, this is it. Like, That's crazy. I'm about to, you know, get to do something. What's up? I'm Austin J. Mills, and if you can't tell, today we're on the road in Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. Today's guest is chart-topping country superstar Kane Brown, and we're about to find out what makes life grand in his Mustang GT500. So buckle up, because this is Drive. Yo. What's up, man? So, I knew you were into cars, but I didn't realize you were the biggest car collector in the South. No, I'm definitely not. <laughs> but I do love cars, man. I grew up not being able to afford any, so. Now I just like, it's like my, my hobby. Well, can you walk us through, walk us through what we have here and then walk us through what we're taking today. Yeah, so this is my 2016 GTR on Liberty Walk Body Kit. She's my baby, but she's my show car, so I don't like really run her hard or anything. Right. She's awesome, she gets a lot of looks. Yeah. And then this is a 2007 uh, WRX STI limited edition Subaru. Uh, it was originally silver, but uh, just had it wrapped. I'm a huge Fast and Furious fan, so love I, it. Jesse, his, his Jetta. This is a Subi, but it's the exact wrap. Right. I love it, man. I knew it had to have some sort of Fast and the Furious uh, yes. twist to it. What do we have here? Um, 2016 Cadillac CTSV, also my baby. It's got a Kong supercharger. So all these cars, other than the Subaru is rated for a thousand horsepower, but we have it at 700 just so we don't blow it up because the head gaskets and Subis always blow up. The black GTR is 1200 horsepower. This one's 1200 horsepower. She's fast, man. A lot of, this is, this honestly gets like some of the most looks just because they're like, I've never heard of Cadillac sound like that. Right, right. <laughs> all right, what do we have here? Uh, this is my newest one. This is my new baby. It's a 2022 GT500. I've customized it like crazy. It's pretty dirty right now. I just drove it, but my wheels I got customized, so they say KB. This is what we're taking today. I'm gonna pop the hood for you just so you can see Ooh. how customized it is. Okay. Did it? Is this color stock? Come like this? Yeah. So this is the original GT500 color. The uh, what is it? The Twister Orange. Pop that. Woo! With the KB in the engine. Yeah. So we redid basically everything on the car from wheels, tires, to everything underneath the hood. So I have a truck too. It's a really big truck, I built it for SEMA. But it's like, when I take that, I get a lot of looks in it, but right. then I'll run into all the cars that like, would race me. Right. And I get really upset, right. you know? <laughs> but you, then I take this and I never see anybody that race me. Do you take on the challenge? How does that work? Oh yeah, yeah. I never back down from a challenge, come on. Did you, you just sold the car? Sold my Hellcat, which okay. I wish I had it back. That was the first car that I built. Went through a lot of different shops with that car. Yeah. Learned a lot. Why did you sell that? To, Cause I was trying to save money. So uh, I was okay. like, I'll just put that into other cars that I'm buying. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really wish I'd have kept it. Are you ready to take this thing for a spin? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's, let's go. go. So take me back. I really want to know what was like the moment in your life where you saw things take a turn for the best? I was 20, 20 years old. Um, I was doing covers on Facebook for like three years before it finally kicked off. And then one day I woke up and just had a lot of new followers come <laughs> through. Like my phone was basically dead while I was on the charger because no I had way. notifications on. Um, so I finally got to turn back on. That, that's when I thought my life had changed. But then what's crazy is it died down again. So then I started posting videos again, more and more and more. And then like a year later, it went to the millions instead of the, the 60,000 that I thought I went viral with. And then record labels started hitting me up. I was 21 years old. Um, I remember going straight to my bathroom and crying because I was like, this is it. Like, That's crazy. I'm about to you know, get to do something. I didn't know to what right. scale, but uh, I was super pumped at what was happening. Is that what kept you going? Like, at least you had some sort of interest in your yeah, videos? Yeah, I wasn't getting five likes, you right, know what right. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, there's some people that... Some people liked you. Yeah, so I was going around and people were like, I see you're singing videos, and right. it, was, it was cool. So you were raised by your aunt, your mom, and your grandma, raised by all women. How yeah. would you say that that has shaped your life today? I would say it definitely made me a soft-hearted person. Um, I'm a big softy. I don't, I'm bad at showing emotions, though, so you wouldn't really know. But uh, I care for everything. Like, don't hurt this butterfly. Right. But um, I kill a spider in a heartbeat. But then I also felt like that's why God gave me girls. You know, be a girl dad. Right. My mom, she used to sing to me all the time. We used to do this thing. We'd watch uh, 
American Idol, we would basically judge each other. Right. She would always say I made it and I would always say you didn't. Right. You know? <laughs> and that was like my bedtime story. Is there anything you miss about not being famous? Um, I would definitely say I miss just getting to hang out with my friends, you know. Um, honestly, it sounds crazy too. I kind of miss living with my Nana. Oh, wow. <laughs> She'd always have me, you know, uh, she'd say, you want a, um, an egg sandwich in the morning? I'm <laughs> like, yeah, man, give me an egg sandwich. I mean, technically, you could just move her in. <laughs> yeah, but no, I don't know. There's just certain things I miss. Uh, I mean, I even miss my 2002 Honda. It yeah. wouldn't do, like, over 5,000 RPMs. Right? Right. There's just something about it. Like, I had to really work for that. And, uh, like, while I was working at Costco in the worst department in Costco, but I bought that car for like two thousand right. dollars, and it was, you know, it, it was, it meant something to me. Right. What would you say drives you to succeed? I definitely think it's sports. I was always like, always tried to be the best person on the court or on the football field, right. uh, baseball field. So I think that kind of carries over into the music world. I just want to be the best I can be because you can't really be. I mean, I guess you could say like, oh, I'm the best artist, but it's people have opinions and. Um, for me, I just want to be the best person that I can be. Like, you know, just outdo myself every year. That hard work and that dedication in playing sports, people don't understand, really makes you who you are. Yeah, it makes you a better person. It makes you actually strive for something, not give up. Like, right. if I'm in the gym, I'm talking to myself, like, come on, bro, 30 more seconds right, right, right. or 15 more reps, <laughs> you know? All right, so we're going to jump into a little part we like to call zero to 60, which is basically where I ask you rapid fire questions in one minute. Are you okay. ready? Yeah. You played a lot of sports in high school, a lot of varsity sports. If you were to play in the MLB or the NBA today, which would it be? NBA. Do you have any hidden talents? I'm really great at video games. I don't think it's a hidden talent, though, because I stream. That works. So, what yeah. would you say your go-to karaoke song is? Would it be arrogant if I sang one of my songs <laughs> just because I'm used to it? Not at all. <laughs> What's one thing on your bucket list? I want to go cage diving with sharks. It's my biggest fear. I can never. No, I don't think I can either. <laughs> you have to give up sports or video games. Which would it be? Oh my god. Can I just die? <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't do it either. There's no way. I can't answer that question. Uh, best country singer of all time? I, I gotta say George Strait, I guess. I mean, he is the king. Fair. Have you ever been starstruck and who was it? Yeah, I will say uh, Cardi B. Oh, that's it was, a good one. It was different because she, she just... She ran into me and my wife. My wife was a big fan. Okay. And she just looked us in the eyes and was just like smiling. I don't know, it's wild. You have to do one thing to like sweep your wife off her feet. What is it? Hang out with her. Quick. <laughs> He's a very simple man. Yeah. You recently dropped your album, Different Man. What does that title mean to you? Man, for me, so I, I got thrown to the wolves when I first started. I told you I started at 21. The reason is now I feel like I, I just I know what I want as an artist. I'm very more mature. I used to always like care what people thought about me. I don't anymore. Like I have a family. Um, I know the artist I want to be on stage. I know how I want my music to sound. Like I'm just a diff completely different man now than when I started. Do you have a song coming out with your wife? Yeah. How did that all happen? How did you know that she had a good voice? Did she ask? But is this something you had to do, you wanted to do? Tell us no, about it. No, so my wife can sing her tail off, right? Thank God you loved me when you didn't have to. My, my fan base has always known that she can sing, and we used to do covers back in the day when we first started dating. Uh, so they've been asking for like five years for us to do a song, and we finally found the right one. And I think it's gonna be the biggest song on my album. Wow. I thought it was maybe one of those things where she was like, all right, you're not getting any anymore until you put me on the album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no she have been on it a long time ago. I was going through your music. I saw Sway Lee, I saw yep. Marshmallow. I mean, you really get into a bunch of different music genres. What would you say is your favorite genre outside of country to collaborate with? Man, um, I haven't done it yet, but I'm like a huge rock fan. Um, and when I say rock, I mean like, uh, we're talking like Green Day or no. what, 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 what I mean, I'm a Green Day fan too, okay. but I'm talking about like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a workout fiend, so like heavy. Like, Hev, like heavy yeah, metal type stuff. Slipknot. Okay. Corn. Okay. Crazy stuff. So that's is why that, that's is that, that going to happen one no, day? No, see, I'm not the type of guy that could do that. Like, I don't have that brand. <laughs> that, ah! Yeah. If you were to have like a dream artist collab, who would it be? My, my good buddy, Al Dean. I've been trying to get him on a song. He's All been right. blowing me off. So, Jason, if you're uh, listening, stop blowing him off. Right. <laughs>
All right, guys, let us know what you thought of Kane's car collection in the comments below. To check out more celeb rides, be sure to click here, and don't forget to subscribe for all new episodes of Drive.